All right, guys. Here is 3.1 day two. So this first problem here is pretty much a review, but you know what? We're going to find the derivative, which is the slope of the tangent line, and we're going to use the new, the alternate definition of finding a derivative. Still means the slope. So this is basically a review from the previous notes that we just took. So let's go ahead and find that tangent line to this curve. And let's use the new method. So it's going to be the limit as x approaches, what's the x value? The x value of the point is 1, so we're approaching 1. Uh, we need the function, which is x cubed minus um, f of a. So we need to plug in the 1 for x, so that would be 1 cubed all over x minus a. The a value is 1. Okay, so this gives me the limit as x approaches 1 of x cubed minus 1 over x minus 1. Well, that x cubed minus 1 is a difference of cubes, and there's a special way to factor that. And if you don't remember, you can all you have to do is type in to Google difference of cubes, and then you see the, the little formula that you can use to, um, to factor it. So this becomes the limit as x approaches 1 of, it factors down to x minus 1, times the quantity x squared plus x plus 1. Remember the minus plus plus all over x minus 1. These cancel because they're a whole. It's a whole. And then we can go ahead and plug in the 1 for all the x's right here. So we'll have 1 squared plus 1 plus 1, which ends up being 3. So we have a slope of 3. Okay, so then our tangent line, t of x, going to equal the slope times x minus the x value was a 1 there, a 1, and then plus the y value is also a positive 1. And then when we simplify that out, 3x minus 3 plus 1, we get t of x equals 3x minus 2. Okay, so that means we're going to have a y-intercept at negative 2, and we're going to go up 1, 2, 3 over 1 at that point, 1, 1, 1, 2, 3 over 1, and then I'm going to use my protractor to help me get a straight line. Hope I'm getting it because I can't tell from, okay, they're good. T of X. Maybe we just did a test on this, huh? All right, and then for N of X, the normal line we know that we have to take the slope of the tangent line and find its opposite reciprocal. The opposite of positive is negative, and the reciprocal of 3 is 1 third. So n of x is going to equal negative 1 third times the same stuff, x minus 1 plus 1. And when we distribute, we're going to have negative 1 third x plus 1 plus, or sorry, plus 1 third plus 1. So then that will be negative one third x plus one and a third. Okay, so the y-intercept is one and a third, so about right there. And we're, our slope is negative one third, so we're gonna go down to the next one third mark and over three, one, two, three. And let's go backwards, up one to the next one third mark and left, one, two, three. And then we'll connect the dots and have our normal line. I can get it positioned. There we go. There's n of x. And we know they're perpendicular to each other, and there we go. So it's using the same stuff, just using the alternate definition of a derivative instead of the x plus h minus f of x all over h type thing. Okay. It still has a bit of a process to it, but it's a little bit shorter. All right, example two. So it says the viewing window below shows the number of hours of daylight in Fairbanks, Alaska. Okay, number of hours in Fairbanks, Alaska. So the hours in a day, on a typical day. Okay, so there's 24 hours in a day and there's only um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight lines there. So I'm, we're probably counting by threes. Three, six, nine, 12, 
15, 18, 21, 24. So Alaska, hours of daylight. So I'm going to turn this sideways so I can write. We're talking about Alaska. And we have hours oops, of daylight. I don't know why I put an O there. All right. And for typical, on each day for a typical 365 day period from January 1st to December 31st. So that's our X axis. So this first line here, this is January, February, March, April, May, June, July, August, September, October, November, December. All right, so I'm just making sure I labeled it correctly. All right, so it says answer the following questions by estimating slopes on the graph in hours per day. For the purposes of estimation, assume that each month has 30 days. So we know that there's a month that has 28 to 29 days, depending on leap year or not. And we know that some months have 30 days versus 31. Let's just assume that the average month has 30 days. Okay. All right. Letter A, it says on about what date is the amount of daylight increasing at the fastest rate? What is this rate? Okay. Well, let's take a look. See. So an increase. So obviously the slope is increasing over here on this side of this little upside down U. So we're increasing over here somewhere. Okay. And where it's increasing the fastest, where the slope is the steepest, it looks to be about right here, right? So it looks like we're at about April. Okay. Yeah, at about April, because April's in the middle there. So I didn't I went too far to the left there. So ignore that. Pretend I scratched that out. So from April, it looks like that's the steepest part right here. And the slope seems to be going from there to there. So that's like two boxes. So we're going up three, six. And then over one. But remember, from April to May, that's a month, and we're assuming that there are 30 days in a month. So okay. So it's about April. The amount of daylight is increasing at its fastest. And when we look at the slope there, rise over run, it was up six over 30, which reduces to one fifth. Okay, so it says, what is that rate? We need to answer what that rate is. Well, the numerator is one. So one hour of daylight for every five days is the rate. Okay. And then it says, does there appear to be days on which the rate of change in the amount of daylight is zero? If so, which one? So if the amount of daylight rate of change is zero, that, that means we're looking for flat lines, so horizontal lines. So we're flatlining right here. We're flatlining right here. And we're flatlining right here. So remember, these are from January 1st to December 31st. So since this is at the very beginning of our graph, that means that it's going to be flatlining at January 1st, where there's zero daylight. And then at the top of the peak, we're at the very beginning of July. So we can assume July 1st. And then over here, we're at the very end of the year. So at the end of December, that would be December 31st. Okay. All right, on what dates is the rate of change in the number of daylight hours positive and negative? So let's look at the positive rates of change first. 
So it looks like we're positive. We're in an increasing slope on this left half of the graph. So that will be from January to July, but we know that January 1st, it flatlines, the slope is zero. So it starts getting positive January 2nd through. It ends up here, but we know it flatlines at July. So that means that must be at the end of June. So June 30th. I spelled positive wrong, and I just noticed that. Okay, negative. You know when you think so fast and you think your hand is catching up with you, but it's not? That was that moment for me. All right, so negative, this, the slope is decreasing right here on the right side of the graph, and it starts after July 1st there. So that means it starts decreasing coming July 2nd all the way down until it flatlines there. Well, right before it flatlines, that means that we're at December 30th. Oops, you guys can't see. All right, turn it over. This one's a short lesson. Example three, it says sketch the graph or sketch a graph of the derivative of y equals the sine of x. Okay, so let's start with the OG, the original. So we're going to definitely review graphing sine, but we're going to do it in a really quick way. Let me turn this sideways. I am left-handed. I can't. I have to write, write at an angle. Okay. So remember, we have amplitude, and that amplitude is for the parent function. Parent sine function is 1 and negative 1. Okay. And I usually put pi over 2, and then pi, and then 3 pi over 2, and then... 2 pi, but I'm just going to put pies and 2 pies, so I wish I had 2 pies. It'd be nice. Okay, and we know what the sine wave looks like. We know that it starts at the origin, and it is up halfway between 0 and pi, at an amplitude of 1, and then back down on the axis at pi. And then down below the axis, halfway between pi and 2 pi, that's 3 pi over 2, and then back up. And then it follows that same pattern the whole way through. Remember, it goes up, down, down, up. I know my drawing sucks, but it is what it is. Okay, well, now we got to sketch the derivative. So, don't freak out. It's not as bad as it looks, I promise. You just have to remember that when we are finding the derivative, we are finding the slopes. So, this is going to be the derivative of sine x. Okay? So, we're still going to need our, you know, negative 1 and positive 1 for our amplitude. And we're still going to need pi and 2 pi, negative pi and negative two pi, okay? And let's start this off by looking at the easiest slopes that we could spot. The easiest slopes that we can spot are the flat lines. Wherever the slope would be zero, would be at each of these max and mins of the sine wave, okay? So let's take a look at that. So halfway between negative two pi and negative pi is negative three pi over two, that's right here, okay? And the slope is zero. So that means at negative 3 pi over 2, the slope is 0. And then halfway between 0 and negative pi, that's uh, negative pi over 2, and the slope there is also 0. So halfway between 0. Then halfway between 0 and pi, the slope there is 0. So 0 and pi, slope is 0. And then between pi and 2 pi, that's 3 pi over 2 the slope is zero. Okay, so we have those four points on our graph, at least. All right, now let's take a look at our tangent lines. So over here, the slope is from at two pi, the slope is going up one, okay? So at two pi, or sorry, negative two pi, the slope is one, so up here. Then at negative pi, the slope is going down one. So negative one. 
then at um, zero, the slope is going up one again. So zero, one. And then at um, pi, the slope is going down, down one. So at pi, negative one. Okay. And then at two pi, slope is going up one again. And let's connect our dots. So we're going down, down, up, up. Down, down, up, up. This is the opposite of the sine wave. This is the cosine wave. We just did the cosine. Okay. So the derivative of sine is cosine. We're, we're going to skip example four. So let's write that. So we can say ddx. Remember that notation from the last lesson? The derivative of sine x equals cosine x, okay? Your homework for this lesson is gonna be page 105, numbers 11, 17, 20, 23, 25, 26, 28, and 29. And this will also be in Google Classroom as well. All right, have a good one.